Anton, thanks so much for having me today on uh, EM Cases. And I'm going to talk about a couple uh, interesting controversies, I would say, in pre-hospital care as well as eMERGE medicine. And the first one is when or when should we not use uh, mechanical CPR? So I think the sexy component of mechanical CPR and the things people always look at is that you can get uninterrupted, high-quality CPR. But at the end of the day, the question is, do you actually improve survival with the use of mechanical CPR when you compare it to high-quality CPR? I think the issue with mechanical CPR, it looks great, but there are a lot of constraints and issues you've got to think about. The weight of the device, the ease of use, the impact on CPR quality uh, when one has to put the device, and obviously, at the end of the day, the cost. I think mechanical CPR got off to a bit of a rocky start. The original study looking at mechanical CPR was the Aspire trial in which the autopulse device was used to look at the impact on outcomes. And the interesting thing is that original study in mechanical CPR was stopped early. And they were stopped early because patients actually had worse outcomes when using mechanical CPR as opposed to standard of care. And the reason their outcomes were worse is we didn't account for the large interruptions in CPR that occurred when actually placing the device. And that happened before the knowledge of high-quality CPR and the importance of high-quality CPR uh, in patient outcomes. So you stop CPR for a long period of time to place the device, you actually may be doing more harm than actually doing good. What we found in other styles, um, looking at both the Lucas and other styles, looking at the Autopulse, is it's been quite clear that if you get the device on quickly and you don't waste a lot of time getting it on, you're going to get high-quality CPR. But the question is, will you improve survival? And that has never been proven through the use of a mechanical device when you compare it to high-quality manual CPR. So, Knowing that, where should you use mechanical CPR? So I've got what I call the Cheska 7. So the seven areas where I would use mechanical CPR. One is if you're in a rural community and you have very little resources, two people responding to a cardiac arrest and that's it. Well, hey, listen, you've got a lot of things to do, IVs, intubation, drugs, Doing high-quality CPR in that scenario, mechanical would probably be a very good use. Long transport times, people get tired doing CPR, and we know that there's a significant decay in CPR quality over time. Long transport times, mechanical CPR is a good place to use it. What about if you're an agency who has no idea about your CPR quality? And I've seen this in many agencies, get a mechanical device. And the reason for that is if you're not measuring CPR quality, it's very likely that your quality is quite poor. And we saw that amongst all agencies in Resuscitation Outcomes Consortium when we started first looking at CPR quality, it was awful before we really focused. So if you're not going to focus on high quality CPR, you may benefit from mechanical CPR. Emerge departments as well. Emergency department CPR, very rarely studied. For the most part in the studies that have been done, very, very poor quality. It may be better to simply place a patient on mechanical CPR when they walk through the door. As well, the PCI lab, you cannot actually do good manual CPR when you're doing a PCI and someone sustains cardiac arrest. Having mechanical CPR as a backup is an excellent use uh, of mechanical CPR. And the last two are the most innovative. Uh, The first one is patients in refractory VF, the Minnesota Resuscitation Consortium, doing some excellent work in patients who present in VF. They fail three successive shocks, and these patients are being transported with mechanical CPR to the cath lab where they undergo ECMO and have PCI performed for generally an LAD lesion, which is the most common cause of patients in refractory VF. That process cannot happen without the use of mechanical CPR. And the last one is heads-up CPR. Heads-up CPR is actually elevation of the head during CPR, the thought that you actually improve cerebral perfusion pressure, decrease ICP, and actually do see beneficial hemodynamics, both in the heart and the brain. That process cannot actually happen while doing manual CPR. You require mechanical CPR for heads-up CPR to be successful. So those are the Cheska 7 where I would use mechanical CPR, but again, no strong evidence to improvement in outcomes. 
do high quality manual CPR and you're probably going to get some fantastic outcomes. All right, so just to review there, the Cheska 7 for when to consider mechanical CPR. Number one, rural environments. Number two, long transport times. Number three, places where CPR quality isn't measured. Number four, and this one kind of surprised me a bit, emergency departments. Dr. Chestis did mention that we don't provide high-quality manual CPR. If anyone out there disagrees, please email me with some evidence to the contrary. Number five, PCI lab. Number six, refractory VF. And lastly, the one that I didn't know much about myself is heads-up CPR. So maybe we'll have Dr. Cheskis back on EM cases to do a deeper dive on heads-up CPR. 